is the Elevated Look Show, hosted by Mark Stamply. Well, Danielle Esplin, it's great to have you on the show. Uh, Award-winning author, EDM musician and songwriter, yeah. <laughs> and award-winning actress. Like you have a lot of things in your arsenal here, so <laughs> it's great to have you on the show here. Thank and you. Uh, I'm excited to kind of hear what's going on in your world right now. You're writing a new book, right? Yes, I am. So, so you're a published author, mm -hmm. which I'm kind of curious to hear a little bit about how that came to be. But yeah. tell me like right now, like tell me about the now, like what is going on? Okay. You're writing, uh, is it a sequel to, cause Give It Back is a book, right? Yes. Anybody can buy it on Amazon. We'll put a link in the description. Okay, yeah. So basically the first book um, is a psychological thriller that I wrote in 2014. 15. Okay. Which is funny because I just saw on my Facebook, you know, my memories. Oh, six years ago, <laughs> I'm like, I've always wanted to do this and now I'm doing this. And <laughs> I'm like, oh, I should be my own motivation right yeah. now. Like I should do, because it's now harder for me to go back and sit and write. But here's why. First okay. of all, Seattle. It's raining, it's nice and mm. dark, it's, you know, like cozy. I had nothing else to do. Okay. I, I didn't even have uh, my work authorization card, so I was not allowed. Oh, really? Yeah, I wasn't. So you were just, because... But a lot of people maybe not, don't know, if maybe they can tell from the accent, but you're from South Africa. Yeah, they do speak it up that. a little. <laughs> they, some people can do yeah. it, right? Um, which is funny, because when I first met you, I met you and I met your friend uh, Joshua. Yes, uh, I Who's him. also, I do, I, I, it's weird. I, some he things I remember, other things I'll just totally forget. Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, mm -hmm. that's funny. He's like, Hi. I got to catch up with him, because, um, yeah, you guys had really good, we did an event out together, mm -hmm. and you guys had really good energy, and uh, that's how we all kind of connected to, like, begin with. Yes. But I remember both of you guys were from South Africa, which I thought was like, well, like both hosts of, of the event are, right? are from like that. That's like, is that a coincidence? Is it not? <laughs> well, I, I just think um, the guy who hosted that, well, the, the guy who actually made the event, yeah. um, he just felt her energy. And he was like, you know, I just know, don't know if it's a South African thing. But uh, people there are very warm, very mm. people, people, you know, and I think that was just great for hosting events and, sure. you know, having, because I was doing basically what you were doing now, like yeah. interviewing people, yeah. right? And that's how we met. I remember, mm -hmm. yeah, it was, it was at Santa Monica, it was right? A, yeah, the uh, Viceroy. Yeah, the yeah. hotel. That was a great event. I, I think so too. I, I'm actually trying to get back to, because the last time I saw you actually was at Elevated Looks. Uh, rooftop event yes and I'm trying to just like that was right before COVID hit mm -hmm. and so I'm just starting to get back into that because I think just this idea of like connecting people within specifically more the entertainment industry but in general has just been really valuable for people and like just in my own life like I've mm -hmm. like I met you there I met a lot of people too, in yeah. all these different um, all these different events industry events so I'm trying to bring a little of that back as things are now kind of opening up. So, but I think this podcast is also helping a lot because you know everybody's yeah. listening, everybody's like <laughs> yeah. sharing ideas, and you know everybody's like, okay, I've never tried that before. Maybe I can try this, or I've never it's even true. thought about it. So, I think even this, like outside of your events, is just mm -hmm. great. So, so thank you for having me. No, yeah, it's great. <laughs> I, it's funny because I didn't think I like the idea of starting this probably happened. Maybe like six months. Like it, it, it I, I, like the, I, I knew pot. Like I kind of wanted to do a podcast, but mm. it wasn't like something on my agenda. And then maybe like six months ago, I'm like, huh, no, it makes sense. It kind of makes sense, and I, I'd like to do it. And I feel, you know, I'm, I produce things, so like mm. I'm constantly talking to people. I'm talking to either talent or, or people who are not well, their talent, but uh, trained talent or untrained talent. Right. Like you know, because I do TV development, and so I'll go into places where you know, I, where people have never been in front of a camera before and I have to like kind of get them going, you yeah. know, to share their story. It's not so much about, um, you know, cause when people think of like producing, they think of like, okay, like it's very scripted and that can happen. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times I think what makes the best producing is when you just get people to open up right. and just naturally yeah. and tell their, and share their story, you, you know, share be, who they are. You should be a reality TV producer where like, it's like next level, like open everybody up and everyone's <laughs> yeah. crying and but everyone's see, like yeah. but then that's when I switch and then I go to like the <laughs> <laughs> and they just panic <laughs> <laughs> but yeah there's a little bit of <laughs> there's a little bit of that but anyways that's that's yeah. like uh kind of how this kind of came about I'm like yeah. okay well you know I do that professionally um why not extend that kind of you know it, it extend that into the this elevated look company right and do the podcast and interview like really interesting people 
And I think also like it just brings a lot of value to people. Like just even from hearing from people, mm -hmm. um, it's been good to hear that like people are liking the content and getting stuff out of it. Right. Even if I now go on set, um, you know, if I do my acting and things, or or even like anywhere where, where I basically meet people in the industry, especially singers, when we talk about how we go about things, they would be like, "Wait, you did that? You did this?" And I'll be like. Yeah, actually, it just naturally happened for me that way where I made okay. these decisions. But now this is my go to routine. And for them, they're like, I've never thought of this. So basically, I know we, we went from the book to this and I know, now we're jumping. Yeah, around, yeah. But that's basically my life. Yeah. That's basically my life. Like literally I wake up in the morning. I'm like, which one? Yeah. And I know, you know, that's difficult because. Um, so like what when you say which one, like what am I going to focus yeah. on today? Yeah. So how and do you manage that? Like, is there any kind of is it more of just like. The instinct guiding you all the time mm -hmm. or is there also a sense of like okay I need to get this done this week I need to get this done this week like how do you it's manage tough. so it's tough like so basically um, it is project focused mostly okay what's the first priorities for this week if I'm booked for an acting job of course you know those dates I'm on set yeah like, there's nothing else that matters you know my you put everything else aside everything you else have to aside. right I have to and if I'm in a character I'm in the character I'm not gonna okay. be Danielle anymore the okay. Danielle's music doesn't matter. It's okay. irrelevant at this point. It still matters. Well, for this character on <laughs> okay. set, yeah, I'm yeah. just not there in that mental space. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to do this. I'm not even thinking about it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but once I'm off set, you know, you kind of get that high. Mm -hmm. You just did this amazing, like, yeah. it was part of an amazing project. You just did all this hard work. It was tough. And, you know, you, you, you invested yourself completely. Mm -hmm. Now you go home and you're like, you're on a high, a little of a high. Okay. I'm not gonna lie, I love it. Okay. But then you're like, okay, what's next? But when yeah. you're on that wave, yeah. you just wanna keep going. It's almost yeah. like a ball rolling. Mm -hmm. The next thing you know, you sit behind your mic. So I just bought myself my own music gear. Okay. Just because, you know, with COVID, it was really, really, really hard. So you're kind of setting up your own home studio? Yeah. You know, there's a friend, and again, okay. I met somebody on, on set. It's so sweet, this guy. Um, I met him on the film I just did, okay. the feature film I just did. And he's like, you know what? Do you need a soundproof uh, booth? And I can build it for you. And oh my goodness. Literally Those are tough. That takes a lot of work. I know. And he's yeah. a prop designer, but still. And then it's like, oh, wait, I have like a rib surgery tomorrow. I'm like, no, 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 no. A what? You rib surgery? Oh. I'm like, you need to rest, yeah. <laughs> recover, and then we can talk about maybe doing this. Okay. But it's just like the people you meet in this industry, yeah. some of them are just gems. Yeah. Like you really need to like protect those connections. Yeah. He's just an amazing <clears throat> person and I never asked anything from him or and he's just like, oh there's beer. I my my a, biggest thing is like, booth. I don't know if I have the space, you know. <laughs> we can get his name. I need a sound booth. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, what about me? <laughs> like, it's so nice to release. I'm checking. <laughs> well, Tony does a lot of audio stuff too, so he might need a sound booth for yeah. his own stuff. Okay. He's, gonna, audio he's engineer. gonna be the sound booth guy. <laughs> yeah. He's like, you like this design? I'm like, wow. He's even asking me for That's like pretty the cool. design. So now, when you s start putting together like a home studio, mm. how do you go about? Like, are you researching, or do you already know? Like, I. I would, I'm more of a, a, a video person. Okay. I, I know, you know, audio to some extent, you know, uh, but I wouldn't necessarily know like, okay, what's like the best mic? Like, what That's am hard. I, what do I need? Like connection wise, do I need like the mixer? Do I need like, mm -hmm. like how big of them? Like what, it's tough. how do you, how do you go about putting that together? Is that something you knew or you're researching as you go? I didn't know any of this. Oh, okay. When I first had a mic, which was a gift from somebody very close to me who believed in me and supported me. Oh, very cool. Yeah. But this mic was more of like a home mic. It wasn't like studio level. It was for me to make my demos, send it out to the producers and be like, do you like the melody gotcha. lyrics? And to give you like, a taste. And they're like, yeah, let's go. Then I go to the studio and out on the Hollywood. Okay. Now I decided I need something that could literally be as good as to the point where I send it out to a label and they're like, yeah, let's go. Or what about even releasing it yourself? Like you exactly. can do that too, right? Yes. So the mics that the mic that I got now is one of the best at home. Um, it's VMSL some one I think I, I can't okay. make at the top of my head. But it's basically one of those con the, the mics. It kind of emulates other studio mics. Okay. Like. 
the studio mic's like ten thousand plus dollars. Yeah, easily, yeah, they're right? very. So expensive. I'm not gonna go do that. I mean, I if I really, 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 really want to, but it's not necessary in today's world anymore. I mean, would you like? Yeah, that's the thing. Like, if you're gonna go to that level, would you just rent the studio exactly. time? Like, it seems like. Right. I don't know. Maybe maybe it does save you a lot of money in the long run if you do have that. But I, I don't know. Right. So it's like I don't think that was necessary. But this mic. That I, you know, I watch YouTube videos. I watch okay. those comparison videos oh, yeah, with yeah. mics. And I really actually trusted the producer that I worked with with my previous song, his opinion. He's in okay. Norway. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, yeah. That, that was the uh, Infinity, Infinity song. Infinity, yeah. Yeah, which we can go into a little bit more later. But yeah, yeah. yeah that's that a crazy story. He would know. He would know. Yeah, I would definitely trust like professionals in that. So he, I just trusted him. You know, I'm somebody like when I trust you, I'm going to go with what that person recommend like I either trust you or I don't okay I'm like a little bit black and white there okay if I have a little bit of skeptic no. no you wouldn't I won't so then what would you do how would you choose your mic so with this guy he uh, recommended something I also with sweetwater.com they're very good okay. these people and this guy was talking to me on the phone as well everybody just confirmed the same thing this is a great mic. This is the go-to mic for if you want to okay. go like very professional at home. And then um, a great interface for this would be this thing. So they all just basically just talked to me, a bunch of professionals. And then I just felt very comfortable with my decision. And um, I went with it. Okay. So you have all the gear now? Um, except for the sound booth yet. <laughs> except for the sound booth. But do you really... Do you absolutely <laughs> need a sound booth? Um, is it that? Okay. Uh, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not an audio. Maybe, you know, Tony could, would chime in here. But... Uh, so I don't really know, I like, mean, is that, uh, is that... If you don't want to see me running around with a water gun in the backyard trying to, sh like, pew, 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 like, uh, birds. <laughs> oh. Literally, it, because the oh, mic really? is so good. So you good. can't, you can't, uh, it's picking up sounds Everything. so far, even that far back. Yeah, I need to go find the bird in the backyard. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I'm running around with water guns. Oh, boy. I'm like, please that, leave. But you have a cat. You could send your cat out there. Yeah, and she comes in, meow, meow. And like oh starts yeah, eating. I'm like, I yeah. really need my sound booth. I gotcha. Okay. At night it's better, but now I'm like singing full bell midnight. That's why I have like my own place. Thank yeah. goodness. But it's like, man, I need to sleep. Because <laughs> <laughs> okay. I like, yeah. Yeah, my sleep schedule is horrible. Okay. Yeah. So are you um, then not going to record until you have that sound booth kind of I'm trying put to. together? I I'm trying to. Okay. Because I would say at least you can kind of get some stuff out. Yeah. And and so, um, kind of as we go now into like, you know, the EDM side, which I'm kind of curious, I, you didn't, I know you told me a little bit about it on the phone, but, yeah. um, like even with Spotify, cause like, like the Elevated Look podcast, we're on Spotify, like we're on all the audio platforms, which is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Um, but like with your songs, like, are you release? like, how are you releasing? Like I have a company that just releases the podcast everywhere. Like so a platform. It, it's a platform, yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's a platform that releases it everywhere. So it's I don't have to spend too much time micromanaging each right, thing. Right. It, everything that I kind of set up goes everywhere. So is it kind of similar with the music? Are you, because you're also combined with other artists, like a, a mm -hmm, DJ, mm -hmm. like are you guys each releasing it individually? Or like how does that work? I'm just curious for my yeah, own so, curiosity. So it depends. Um, my previous song, Infinity, I actually good song by the way. I listened you. to it today. Fantastic. Yeah, thank you. Uh, had it playing in here. I was I was actually <laughs> thinking about playing it as you were getting in here, but I'm like, uh, you, the like other things were going on. So yeah, it's like that would be funny. I'm like, oh no, please take it back. Also, you don't like to hear your music after. I mean, I I'm fine. I I know that you have to. You have to basically like what I've heard, which is a really good thing to do for your own like music and your own um, like perspective. Because you know when you're like even with writing a book or making a movie mm -hmm. or making, you know, any any project, the more you are exposed to it, the less you can really have a great, like a real perspective yeah, of what of, it's like. What's yeah. the quality really? You're too like look deep into you're it. You're either hyper-focused, like, yeah. you're like nitpicky, you're perfectionistic, or you're just like not, I don't know, you're just like not in tune anymore. Yeah. Even like the plot of in my book, I'm like, oh. Other people are like, oh my god, I never saw that coming. I'm like, I'm so over this. Yeah. Morning, you know? So I heard that one of the best things you can do with your music is, which my brother was like, what are you doing? Like, come on, like, what is this? You really, like, like he's, my brother's the one who always put your back in, like, check. Like, oh, like, okay. Yeah. So, in, I didn't in even know you had a brother. Yeah. How many, how many siblings do you have? I have an older brother, an older sister, twin sister, and a half brother. Okay, I think I remember me. you talking about the twin sister. Okay. Yeah. 
So, um, but I grew up with, um, I'm one of four in the house. Okay. Yeah. So, so your brother was the one that kept you in check? Yeah, well, so this is the thing. So what you have to do with the music to really know whether your quality is up there is you put it in your playlists. Mm -hmm. You just sneak it in there, you know, and yeah. you shuffle your playlist and you just listen. Like, don't focus on it. Just drive, do your thing. Mm -hmm. Listen to music. And if your, music, your song comes up, try not to like, <gasps> you know, like think Ooh, about it. Ooh, it's my song. Don't think about <laughs> it. Yeah. Just listen and f go, does this feel like it belongs here? Okay. In my favorite playlist. Okay. At all. Like, does it feel like it's up to the quality? Is it up to, like, what it should be? So does it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's still hard for me to do this. But sometimes <laughs> you're just, like, in a... In a tr you yeah. know when you drive and you're, like, in a trance or whatever? I liked it. I actually thought it was really good. I mean, this is a collaboration. So I'm very proud of, like, working with, like, se with, with um, Sebastian. He's... Okay. He's in Norway. I'm very proud of what we did together and okay. how we went about it. Does he do a lot of other EDM? Like, has yeah. he done... He's got different Stuff. names for different genres. Okay. Um, but we're going to make more music, actually. Okay. We're working. So how did you get into that? Like, let's get to yeah. that because I'm kind of curious. You said that was like an interesting story. Yeah. Like, how did you get, go, you know, from, like, did you, had, did you listen to EDM? Were you, like, how? <laughs> well, actually, it was most of the EDM that was, like, on the radio in South Africa. So okay. it's most of, like, a pop EDM or house. Especially like... Um, Do they listen to like a lot of the US EDM or is that like... A, everything. No, no. Yeah, like, we're not going to listen to Skrillex. A lot of European... I used to be really into Skrillex. Oh, yeah. Dubs of everything. Yeah. But we have a big party scene in South Africa okay. where it's like when you go out, the music is great. It's mm -hmm. really good. So it's like a festival type music mixes, okay. DJs and yeah, things yeah. like that. That's pretty so, cool. So, you know, I know how to vibe. Okay. <laughs> if I want to say it that way. Okay. I know I have a good time with my friends. Okay. And, you know, you go out and you have a good time and you're just like feeling the music. Yeah. Everybody's in a good mood. Um, you have a good energy. So you, you're just like... So you like that EDM scene yeah. in South Africa. That kind of what originally like got you into it like t yeah. from the beginning. Yeah. So it's more mainstream, I would say, yeah, yeah. more mainstream EDM than, you know, I know there's a lot of trends and things that's more like certain types of festivals, yeah. which I, I'm not too much into the same, like, duh, 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 duh. Yeah, I'm not really little, so that's much that's into that's the trance either, yeah. Style. Not really much um, into that either. I mean, I like the ones with the vocals, of course. Yeah. So what happened was, I don't even know how, I mean, this is in two, 2017, I believe. Okay. About four years ago? Yeah. Oh. Almost, like in the end of 2017. And I was on this Facebook group. I don't even know how I ended up in this Facebook group. It's probably like a producer thing. I think I was trying to start getting to know how to use one of okay. my, my software. Facebook groups used to... Well, you know what? Facebook groups have kind of come back, actually. Like, yeah. they used to be really big. And then I think they got went away for a while. And now, like, Facebook is really pushing. pushing yeah. They're really pushing that as, like, part of the thing. I don't know if it's part because, like, Clubhouse took off and that, that whole thing. Mm. But I know, like, they were really pushing it... Um, so you, were you like in like a singer songwriter? It was songwriter? called for like an EDM bedroom oh. producer what is thing. It? EDM bedroom producer. It's like EDM people. bedroom producer. Oh, so like, like a, at home. A do it your DIY kind of yes, EDM. Yes, yeah. right. And I. That's kind of cool. You probably yeah. get a lot of cool stuff out of that. So I basically was on this group. Oh, there's so many like people just a bunch of like stuff posting. And you kind of just yeah, like, it's like too much. If you do see a post, you do. If you don't, you don't. Yeah. So what happened like was... Like, are you in the filmmaker group? Like, I'm in a lot of filmmaker groups. And I I'm don't just even like, see those posts anymore. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like I'm just random. like... Yeah, I, I feel like by habit, I look at it and I'm just like, oh, my God. Is my movie poster cool? Yeah, and yeah, it's yeah, like yeah, the yeah, worst yeah. movie poster you've seen <laughs> in your entire life. <laughs> yeah. But you don't have the heart to like... And then everyone gets into it. They're like... Uh, like, some people are just brutal. Right. And then everyone's they have like, to no, be dude, like you gotta the one telling you what the It's like, you paid for this? Like, It's like, no, I did it. Yeah, so it's like... You know, and then everyone's sharing their short film, and it's just like, oh, God, like, yeah. I just can't even, yeah. I can't even tolerate, like, that anymore, unfortunately, but oh, try the it's actors hilarious one. Try sometimes. the actor's one, try the script writer's one. Okay, yeah, I don't think I'm in either of those, so. Like, some, some people are brutal. Yeah. Like, they would laugh at you in your face, like, ha, 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 and somebody's just asking a question, being new, or whatever, and they're just yeah. like, you are, like, good luck. You know, they're, like, very brutal, and, like, you just crush <laughs> somebody's dreams. It's, yeah, Forever. but sometimes, it, I don't know, like, I kind of appreciate that, like, I almost feel it's better to be more brutal than in, in off tough times, love. especially in that, yeah. You need some tough love. And as I long, think, yeah. Yeah. I think there's a difference between, like, 
like just being negative to be negative right. and also just being like just down to earth real with the person just say hey like <laughs> like the, you know this is not not going to cut it like either you're going to have to like up your game or this isn't for you like yeah. there is that like not everyone's going to make it you know mm -hmm. so i think there is that level <laughs> of just you know? like like spend your time doing something else you know? yeah like, no, maybe there's something else you can do it's true like sometimes it's just like no it's true i again i i am all about like hey pursue your dream do what like you believe sure you, know you should what you're do doing at least well yeah and like and also like i'm also a big believer in like keeping with it like i yeah. am a big believer in like stay with it like a lot of people just give up or a lot of people don't give it long enough especially in the acting world like they're like oh they yeah. expect something they expect their movie to be handed to them they expect i mean a TV I, show. I had this conversation last night with a person he's not even in the industry he's in real estate oh, but okay. i was just like this industry, people in this industry, is incredibly self-entitled. Absolutely. And they ex almost the world <laughs> in general yeah, now, but, but yeah, like but especially specifically here, it's yeah, like especially here, next level. It's Absolutely, literally yeah, yeah. like almost like to the point where you're like, this is a joke, right? Like uh, this is a joke. Yeah. And it's like no, and that is what makes people. And the more they 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 get success or yeah. any sort of like credits, the more demanding and entitled they act. They can be. Which is counterproductive because th it's not going to help them in the long run. No. It often destroys like careers that way. I was in the casting as well, so I was oh, behind. Oh, you were. Yes. So That's I was, right. I couldn't I remember hearing a little bit. I was behind the camera as well, and the things I saw in that room and what the people would send in and reply to emails was mm -hmm. horrific. With 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 regards to the the casting directors or the the actual. The actors acting like they are basically royalty when. Really. But they how, have what, no what level? What level? They don't even have credits. Oh, that's like yeah. That. And no, and they're I not mean, joking. Just, yeah, then it's it's like the people on American Idol that think they can sing, yeah. but they're just like a train yeah. wreck, and they're they're like, yeah, you're gonna be on TV, <laughs> and then they, like, we we cast <laughs> not them. the way you think. It was I think it was a Sam Hunt music video or something, and there was a female who um, we wanted to bring in. So we actually started focusing more on models for this okay. role because they wanted like a good looking female for this role. Okay. Um, I don't know for which song it was. I just know it was that artist. And this girl comes in. She's wearing sunglasses, first of all. I'm like, okay. Oh and boy. there's nothing in this. Okay, whatever. You do you. Um, and she just sits there, but she won't speak to anybody. And if you speak to her, she won't reply. She acts like, nope, like the, she's the only one in the room. I'm like, um, I have to like l inform her what mm -hmm. to expect inside and give her instructions because okay. we need this to go. Like we don't have all day. You're yeah. like, you have to get in, do your thing, get out, right? How many people are you guys seeing a day? Oh, that depends if it's callbacks or, you know, but you can okay. easily see. I mean, if you say I do a day, lot of casting. I've done a lot of casting, especially in the past. Yeah. And um, yeah, like you really, one of the things, the mistakes I made early on was giving people too much time. Oh yeah. I hate to say it that, happens. but like I really like was generally like wanting to be helpful. And sometimes you are like, mm -hmm. especially if you see something in them and you're like, hey, like this might, ha like I'm, you're gonna give them time to see if they can bring it. Mm -hmm. But like early on that like definitely was a mistake I made was. Yeah. Um, I am, I'm luckily, I this is one thing I do admit about myself and I'm not saying, cause I think a lot of people think this about, but, I, but what I've seen and heard from people as well, and yeah. just from my intuition and things has happened where I was like getting a f hunch and a feeling and it actually happens, um, which is crazy to me. And every time I'm like, whoa, that's... Okay. There was times I'm like, no, come on. You're not going to make an act. You're not going to act based on a gut feeling just because you had a dream or something. Oh, wait, wait, so, so, so I wait, 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 break that down because I'm not entirely... So you're saying like you get like kind of like a... Like a on a like even more than an instinct like almost yeah. like a visual intuition yes. of like what how you should be portraying something or um or how it's gonna go sometimes i would this is the craziest thing and to this day i don't know what to think about it to this day i'm like oh my god i don't you know it's silly but it happens and it happened um a few times sometimes um okay one example okay a simple stupid example but it's happened like a couple years ago um I'm just gonna use this one because it's very, very recent and very vivid, very real. And I, this is actually one I was like, nah. Thanks for watching. There's lots more content coming your way, so make sure to subscribe to get the latest episodes delivered directly to you.